Now, go to gallery view. I'm not sure why we've got Anthony up there. I got a black screen on mine. Okay, well, I'm not sure why. Because I, 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 I touched somebody's name that didn't have the yeah. camera. Okay. See Bill Ruffer's on. Hey Bill, his microphone's muted. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna unmute everybody for just a second. Me back. Try to get me back on it. All right. Let me. Okay. Everybody. Now, there's the Zoom chat for some reason. All right, we're recording. Can you hear me? Just, just nod or wave if you can. Okay, good deal. Well, in that case, uh, let me kind of go back over a couple of announcements from this morning. Just remember our, our sick folks, uh, Aline has had a tough time with her knee and she's kind of, kind of holed up and, and not wanting to uh, have too much interaction right now. And that's probably good at the moment. Um, Wayne and, and David and Jill Nash are all still trying to recover from uh, their various ailments. And I think Jill is waiting to see if maybe she can have a, a heart pump implanted. I haven't heard what the outcome of that's gonna be. Uh, Joyce Green, Debbie's, uh, uh, Debbie, uh, Denise's mother is at home now. And Linda Howell is also at home. She was in the hospital earlier this week. Uh, a lot of other folks in the bulletin, do keep them in your prayers. Obviously, as David mentioned, Pretty much everything going on this week has been canceled. Wednesday night, Lord willing, we'll have another class from Malachi at seven, like we did this past week. And this time I'll try to record that so we can post it online. Didn't even occur to me last time until somebody asked about it. So we'll try to have that recorded so that we can post it online. Uh, before we get started, what I have tonight is just a, a, a simple lesson for us to share uh, a sermon. But before we do that, let's take a moment and pray together. Lord God, our Father, we're grateful that you provide us with this means of communicating and being together in mind and in spirit, if not in body. We're thankful to you that we live in this time when we have comfort and good care when we're sick, we pray for those who are sick that they might recover quickly. Father, our prayer is that the testing and the effort to find a vaccine and a cure for the illness going around would be effective and would be successful quickly and soon, Father. We pray for those that are on the front lines of combating it for our healthcare providers and our first responders and ask that you keep them safe and in in good health and keep them in good frame of mind so that they're not worried and concerned all the time. Father, we pray for our folks that are still mourning the passing of loved ones, ask that you would comfort them. We pray our Father that you keep us strong and faithful to you during this time. Forgive us when we stray, when we doubt, when we struggle. We thank you, Father, for all of your good gifts and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. What I want to do with you this evening, since we can't be physically together, is just share some thoughts that uh, sprang from a, an idle comment several years ago. Now, in the early part of the 17th century, in the 1620s, 
uh, an English poet who was also a scholar and a soldier, and actually an English clergyman, uh, wrote a brief poem, and it may be most familiar to us of all of his works. You may never have heard his name except in this connection. His name is John Donne, D-O-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and the poem says, no man is an island entire of itself. We've referenced this before. You may recognize this. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a, cloud, if, if a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as any manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I'm involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Now that opening line, no man is an island, is probably the best known part of that whole poem, and it's the part that nearly all of us have heard at some point. Maybe we never realized there was more to it than that. But several years ago when we were in Jamaica together, Brother Sutton Spence, Stan Mitchell's son-in-law, uh, made the comment that there's no such thing as an independent Christian. And that really, that, that statement really rang a bell for me. Before we get to the point of our study this evening, though, I want to invite you to read something from the Apostle Paul that in some ways is actually very similar to what John Donne said. So take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 14, and let's read verses 1 through 9 together. Romans 14, <clears throat> starting at verse 1. Now, the English Standard Version says it this way. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It's before his own master that he stands or falls, and he'll be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Now here's the point. We don't live in a vacuum. And no matter how much we may try at times, there's just no way for us to live, to exist, to pass through this world without affecting or impacting other people. Part of the very essence of being Christians is that we're connected to the people around us. And yet, what do we encounter? We find folks that, that want disconnected independence in this life. They want to exist separate from society, separate from family, separate from the church. They want all the blessings of God and none of the responsibilities. Desiring what we might call disconnected independence is really just an effort to avoid being accountable, to escape being accountable for our choices and our actions. And that's basically what the prodigal son wanted over in Luke chapter 15, in verses 12 and 13. He says to the father, give me my share of your estate. And the father gives it to him. And what does he do? Just shortly thereafter, shoom, off he goes to waste what he's got in riotous living. He wanted to be free of any kind of restraint, any kind of oversight. He didn't want to have to answer to anybody. 
He didn't want any limits on his desires. But what did he learn? What he learned was that his choices had consequences he couldn't ignore. That's Luke 15, verses 14, 15, and 16. He ran out of money. He got hungry. He basically forced somebody in that foreign country to take him on as a hired hand. And then he wound up eating food that wasn't even fit to feed the pigs. The pigs were eating better than he was. His choices had consequences he didn't expect. The problem that, that we have with this, this desire to be independent, to do our own thing, to be disconnected, to not be responsible, the problem lies in the very idea that we can be independent of everyone and everything, that we can be free from responsibility for what we do and how it impacts other people. That's the point that Don was making in his poem Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod is washed away by the sea, well, the continent is that much smaller. It's diminished. It's simply not possible to exist disconnected from and independent of everybody else in this world. There's not a single person since Adam that has arrived in this world without assistance from somebody else. Maybe you never knew your mama, but the only way you got here was that she gave you birth. Even with the ability that, that the 21st century offers us, uh, we were just astonished. Uh, the doorbell rang the other night, and here was somebody bringing food that, that uh, Jasmine had ordered on Grubhub or, or DoorDash or something, and we didn't, we didn't expect that. But even with the ability to order food delivered to the door, you can't be completely disconnected, completely independent of other people. Somebody still had to make it. Somebody else had to deliver it. What we do affects other people. There's simply no way around that. But in that same vein of thought, there's no such thing as an independent Christian. Think about that. When a person becomes a Christian, the father is the one who adds that person to the church. That's what we read in Acts 2 and verse 47. The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved, those who were being saved. But like the guy in the commercials on TV, but wait, there's more. What is the church? Go to Ephesians chapter 1, and in verses 22 and 23, we read that God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him, Jesus, to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Likewise, over in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18, Paul tells, tells us that, that Jesus is the head of the body, the church, who's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, see, here's, here's that where that, that desire to have everything revolve around me, to be disconnected and have everything on my terms, here's where that falls apart for the Christian. He gave him to be head over all things to the church, the fullness of him who fills all in all, and then to the Colossians, Paul says, he's the head of the body, the church, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Whenever a child of God tries to exist, tries to, to thrive spiritually, tries to please God independent of the church, well, that person's like a, a finger or a toe trying to survive without being attached to the rest of the body. But Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, if one member, one part of the body suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You see, the illustration that he's using relates to parts of the body, according to verses 15 through 25. 
And, and the main point in that whole context is in verse 14. In fact, the body is not one member, but many. We're all part of one body. The very idea of an independent Christian is, is a contradiction in terms. If we cut ourselves off, uh, shut ourselves off from all other parts of the body, what are we also being disconnected from? We're also being disconnected from the head, who is Christ. And that's the point that Paul makes in Romans chapter 12 and verse 5. We, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually, members of one another. He doesn't say that we're individual members of Christ. He says we're members of one another. We're parts joined together as the body of Christ. Now, here's the main point. We really ought to, if we're going to be Christians, surround ourselves with folks that are going where we want to go. Far from trying to be a, a disconnected Christian, that's what the world seems to think is, is a good idea. Is, uh, the religious world refers to themselves as spiritual, but not religious. But instead of trying to be that, what we need to be showing the world is an example of what it is to be the most connected people in this world. Because we're connected through Jesus to the God who made it. In Christ, we're blessed to be part of a family that, that's been born again through the blood of Jesus, our Savior. And that's why he didn't say, go hide from the world. Go, go be separate from everybody else. Go build yourself a monastery or a cloister or a, a hidey hole and crawl in and pull it in after you. What did he say? Go into all the world. Mark 16, verse 15. We have neighbors. We have family, we have friends, we have co-workers. And right now, while we're separated physically, one of the things they need to see us doing and being is people who, even in this awkward, inconvenient moment in time, people who are joined together, supporting each other, encouraging each other, drawing strength from each other spiritually, and in the ways that we're able to be connected. God never called us, Christ never called us to be independent Christians, independent of each other, and, and if we're independent of each other, independent of him. He called us to be dependent Christians, folks who draw strength and courage and determination from his example. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, Jesus endured the cross because he despised the shame associated with it. He looked past that moment to what he was trying to accomplish. And we need to look past this moment and past our moments where, where we do want to dig a hole and, and pull, crawl in it and pull it in after us, where we do want to be disconnected. We need to look past those moments to who and what we're actually trying to be in Christ. He says there that we ought to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. He was focused on the blessing, on the benefit, not on the pain or the suffering, the inconvenience or the drawback. And because of that, now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. If you really just have an overwhelming desire to be independent, to be independent of something in this world. Try being independent of and disconnected from the sins and the hypocrisy and the phoniness of the world that's trying to live without Christ. That's a declaration of independence worth making. We can't really respond to the invitation uh, for baptism in this circumstance very conveniently, but if you'd like to ask your brothers and sisters to pray for you, pray with you, um, I guess the simplest thing to do would be to 
to text that or to post that on our Facebook page, and folks would be glad to do that. We are a body, we are a family, and I don't know anyone who would refuse to honor a request like that. Let's take a moment and we'll pray together and we'll dismiss this little gathering. Would you pray with me? Once again, Lord God, we bow in your presence to say thank you for the ability and the opportunity to be together in this way. Father, this is, this is a little strange and awkward for us, but we're thankful that we can communicate, that we can see each other, that we can hear each other, that we can draw strength and encouragement from knowing that there are others who care for us and, and are mindful of our conditions. Father, we ask that you help us be strong in spirit and dependent on you, leaning on you for comfort and for guidance, and leaning on one another as members of your son's body, part of the same family, the kingdom of Christ. Help us to draw courage, to draw endurance and strength from being together in this way. Father, we pray that you continue to keep us safe, that you help us to be faithful to you in the face of stress and trial. We love you, Father. We're grateful to you for all that you've done for us and that you continue to do. May we ever be thankful. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me unmute this for just a minute. And okay, you should be able to hear everybody all two, three, five, ten, fifteen, different people, and there's all kinds of racket in the background. Baby, thank you for doing this for us. It's really a blessing. We appreciate it. Hey, Paul. How are you doing, Anthony? Okay. I hear Paul and Anthony talking about it. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is going to quickly get uh, uh, a little raucous. You've got one device going in the same room. It's kind of like having an open mic in front of a speaker. It's it turn it on. Yeah. yeah, turn it on. Turn it on. Okay. But you tell where the noise is coming from because your picture pops up on the screen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hey, Lewis, how are you doing? I'm going to go ahead. Since this is starting to squeal, I'm going to stop recording there. And then. Uh,